God is so, so good. If you have your Bibles, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. That's where we'll be here in just a few minutes. I'm so glad to be here today. I'm so glad you are here. And I'm excited to share with you what God has laid on my heart. Do y'all know what today is? Grandparents' Day. Grandparents' Day. Uh, I want to wish you all a happy Grandparents' Day. Um, by show of hands, how many grandparents do we have? Raise your hand if you're grandparents. Awesome, awesome. Raise your hand if you're a great grandparent. Awesome. Now let's see how many of this. Great, great. We got any great, great? All right. All right, all right. We do have some great, greats. Awesome. That's great. Here's a picture of my grandmother. Uh, most people called her Mamie, but I had the privilege of calling her Granny. Uh, my granny was awesome, as, as you think your granny's awesome. I know you all do. Um, thinking about my granny, I think about food, right? You think, when you think of granny, you think of food? You know my wonderful physique, yeah. My, uh, my grandmother always invited us over every Saturday for lunch, the whole family. She had six kids. She had 14 grandkids, and she had a ton of greats, and now she has some great greats. But I remember going over there. And she would take a piece of wood and put it over the sink, and that whole counter would be full of food. But Brother Scott, it was, it was different then. Because then the adults went first, and the kids were at the back of the line. I don't know how your tradition is now with your family, but that's been reversed with mine. It's got to go back, right? It's got to go back. Um, I can just close my eyes, and I can see that spread. It didn't matter what she was having. She was going to have some beans, cornbread, fried potatoes. Uh, I mean, all the time. I can, I can see that sauerkraut and weenies. Oh, and that casserole. It was good. So I can close my eyes and go like this and just smell it. All right? It was good, good stuff. I said she had 14 grandkids, a lot of great grandkids. But she had this special ability of making each one feel special, making each one feel loved. I was so blessed to have her as my grandmother. I asked my students this week, I, I remind them, guys, don't forget, Sunday, Grandparents' Day, let them know you love them. I said, what is it about your grandparents that you appreciate so much? And here are some of the things they shared with me. They appreciate their grandparents' wisdom. They know that they can go over to their grandparents' house and they can get some good advice. Um, they appreciate being taught by them, learning about cars, going camping. Miss Barbara, Jay appreciates that you know a lot about sports. Um, they said they appreciate their grandparents' support, the food that they provide, how they take them to church. And the last one uh, share, to share with you is they appreciated their grandparents' Christian walk, their faith, and how they set an example for the family. Grandparents, this morning, I want to encourage you, or first I want to say we love you, and we appreciate all that you do for your family. I want to encourage you to keep on praying, keep on serving, and never give up. Keep on making a difference in your family, and in the lives of those around you. I'm going to pray for you, and then uh, I'm going to share this morning's message. God, we love you, and we thank you. We thank you for the grandparents here. God, we thank you for their, their family and their grandchildren. God, we thank you for the godly example that so many set. God, I pray that they just continue strong in the faith, setting that godly example for their loved ones. We love you and thank you. Please be with us. That time, God, please speak through me. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have a bulletin and would like to fill out the outline, let me share that with you. 
the title of my message is Celebrate Family. The three points I'm going to share with you is celebrate our, our grandparents. The second one I'm going to share with you is celebrate our Heavenly Father. And the last one is celebrate our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, life isn't always that easy, is it? Life is hard. Life sometimes just feels like a roller coaster where we have our ups and we have our downs and a lot of in-between. We experience all kinds of emotions. We have heartache, we have headaches, we, we go through so much. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God gave me family to go through this crazy thing we called life. Let's celebrate, number one, our grandparents. You know, uh, my mom, she went to church her whole life growing up. You know why she went? Because her grandmother took her. She had a great grandma. Listen, I'm going to share with you another great grandparent. If you have your Bible, look in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 through 5. It says, I thank God whom I serve, whom I serve with a pure conscience. As my forefathers did, as without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. Well, Paul's a great guy, right? He's in prison. His life is very short, and he's writing to Timothy. He's writing to encourage him. He's writing to let him know how I'm praying for you. And look at verse 6. Or verse 5, sorry, it says, When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded is in you also. Timothy had a wonderful grandparent. You know, I don't know a, a lot about Grandma, uh, Grandma Lois, but I do know this. Uh, first, I don't know how, if she made good cornbread, Cindy. And I don't know where all she may have took little Timothy, but I do know that she lived in a way that her faith was recognized. She lived in a way that her faith was recognized. No doubt she lived in a, she, she focused in on God. And the way that she walked, the way she carried herself, the way she treated other people, it was noticed by those around. It was definitely noticed by her daughter. And then it was noticed by her grandson, grandparents. As you look at this text, I want to encourage you to realize that your grandchildren are watching and that you are, are setting an example. In verse 8, just a few verses down, it says, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. I want to encourage you, share your faith. You know, grandparents pass a lot of things down, right? They pass down that awesome cookbook and those recipes. They pass down jewelry. Grandparents, the greatest thing that you can pass down is your faith, is, is live in a way that your grandchildren can see Christ in you. Uh, be the godly example Christ has called you to. I'm so excited that I had a great grandma that, that loved the Lord and set that example for me. And I know as I look at you guys, you grandparents, that you do the same, and I appreciate that. I'm so glad for us. We celebrate our grandparents. The next one I want to talk about is celebrate our Heavenly Father. This morning, whenever I got here, the last song that I heard on K-Love, the title of the song is called Same God. And part of the lyrics go this way. It says, I may not face Goliath, but I've got my own giants. It says, oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. Aren't you so happy that you have God to go to? This summer, my nephew Preston, he'd went to the beach, and when he was down there, he had a cut, and it got infected. He came home, and I saw him on that Saturday. He's just doing some of the normal stuff he he does, going fishing and driving the side by side around, just having a good time. Sunday, he goes to church and he 
goes to the movies after church with his friends, and he looks down, and he's like, whoa, <laughs> his ankle is huge. That next day, he woke up, and he had fever, and he wasn't feeling good. They take him to the hospital. They stay there for a little bit, and they send him home. That night, his fever's going back up, and he goes back to the emergency room. We get a text. Pray for Preston. He's at Tallahanna with some kind of infection from the beach. His fever was 104, but down to 101. His blood pressure, 88 over 38. So we, we get the kids together, and, and we pray. We're praying. It's not long. We get another text. It says, he is septic. Can't stabilize his blood pressure. It's 62 over 32. They're taking him to Tulsa. Uh, the kids, I mean, they're, like, they're cousins, but they're like brothers and sisters. We live by each other. And uh, the kids are crying, is Preston going to be okay? Is Preston going to be okay? And, and we, just, we just grab hands. And we're just giving over to God. We're praying, God, please be with Preston. Please, please be with the doctors looking over him. Please be with uh, his mom and his dad. Shortly after, we get another text and say, we're flying, flying him to Little Rock. No beds in Tulsa. They, they get him to Tulsa, or they get him to Little Rock and get another text. He's septic with toxic shock. And uh, as a family, we're there holding hands and we're praying. And God does this amazing thing. In the time of chaos, he can just bring some calmness. We pray and the kids go on and me and Melissa are just there talking. And I'm said, I am so glad we have God. So glad that we have God. You know, when we're younger, we think that we can handle problems. But as I get older, I realize more and more of how incapable I am. But praise God, I realize and understand more and more of how capable He is. We used to sing a song, God is bigger than any mountain. It says, God is bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my questions, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. And I knew that God was bigger than Preston's infection, and I knew that I could give it over to God and that he was in God's hand and that everything would be all right. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and, and verse 7, it says this. It says, Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you we uh we just we pause what we were doing we say god we need you anybody ever had that moment in your own life you know what i'm saying it and god awesome Listen, God is so awesome how we could say, God, here. And God can just take it and work and move. God is, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. It says, casting all your cares upon him. And that ending says, for he cares for you. How much does he care for you? He says, so, so much. I used to ask Riley. I used to say, Daddy loves you. Daddy loves you. He said, and then I say, Riley, how much do you love the old you sooners? <laughs> or no, 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 sorry, I got this backward. I always say, I said, Riley, how much do you love daddy? She'd say, so much. She'd like do her hands like this, so much. I said, Riley, how much do you love the Arkansas Razorbacks? And she would say, so much. Our grandpa's an OU fan said, Riley, how much do you love the OU Sooners? Just a little bit. <laughs> when I say, Riley, how much do you love me? She says, so, so much. Listen, God loves you so, so, so much. How much? He loves you so much he sent his son to die on the cross for you. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 it says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hey, we have so much to be happy about this morning. We, got, we may have troubles at home. We may have to go fix something, do something. But oh, we can be happy this morning because one, we think about our family that's loved us. We think about God who loves us so, so much. And lastly, let's think about our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, I was telling you about Preston. He had a rough time there for a couple of days. That night was long, getting those different text messages. But early that next morning, you know what I did? I text Steve and Tim, and I text Scott, my brothers in Christ. And you know I had to call Brother Mike. I called Brother Mike. And they put, they put Preston on the prayer chain. And, I, and other people in the family, they, they told their brothers and sisters in Christ. And it was all over the, the country. People praying for him and praying to God that God would just intervene and work and move. It was so, so awesome to come to church the next Sunday. Several people didn't come up and say, how's your nephew but what they did, they come up and say, how's Preston? How's Preston? It's so, let me tell you, it is a blessing to have you guys. To have you, my brothers and my sisters in Christ. Because, listen, last night I came up here, I was waiting on Riley and I peeked in and there was people in these pews praying for the service today. There was people this morning come up, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you. Man, I know that I am incapable, but God is good. And I, I appreciate my brothers and my sisters who says, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. How many of you appreciate your brothers and sisters in Christ? Let me tell you somebody that appreciated his brothers and sisters in Christ, and his name was Peter. Look at Acts chapter 12. Verse 1, it says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some, of, some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread, so when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter was therefore kept in prison. If you follow following along with me, this is awesome. Read the next part. It says, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers. And the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Gird yourself and tie on your sandal. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him and did not know that it was done by the angel. Sorry. And did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was sleeping. Or seeing a vision, sorry. When they were past the first and the second guard posts, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down the street, and immediately the angel departed from him. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. Can you imagine what it was like to hear Peter tell this story? Huh, can you imagine? You imagine saying, oh, man, it was, it was a hard time. My brother in Christ, they, they took him, they killed him with a sword, and then they got me. Herod, he wanted to, he wanted to kill me, and he put me, he put me in, and he had all kinds of people watching me. When all of a sudden, this angel, like, 
wake up. And I just started walking out. I thought it was a dream. I got farther and farther and farther. And then I was like, oh man, God got me out of here. And then I get to this house and I knock on the gate. And a girl comes out, she sees me, she runs back in. You imagine how excited he was? You imagine how excited he was that those, his brothers and sisters in Christ were in constant prayer for him? Man, I am so, so appreciative of the brothers and sisters in Christ that I've had in my life. I'm sure we could tell stories and stories and stories that last for a week about the difference that a brother and sister in Christ has made in your life. How when you were sad, they came and, and made you smile. When you, you didn't know which way you were going to go, they come and, and helped you along. God has given you so, so much. This morning, as we close, my, my saved friends, I want you to be encouraged. And I want you to know this. My granny's been gone since 2006. But because she knew Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, and I know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I have hope. That soon and very soon, I'm going to get to see God. I'm going to get to see Jesus Christ who paid it all for me and for you. I'm going to get to see my granny. In, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring, him, uh, bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will be, by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. So brothers and sisters in Christ, be encouraged this morning, because I know if you're like me, there's all kinds of problems that you have faced. There's all kinds of difficulty, and there's all kinds of struggles. But this morning, celebrate. Celebrate family that God has given you. He's given you so, so much, and allow you to face these crazy days that we go through. Maybe you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you sit there and you think, I had an awesome grandparent. And you can rejoice in that. But maybe you sit there and you think, I don't go to the Heavenly Father. I, don't, I have never experienced the, the brother and sisters in Christ that you were talking about. Hey, today I want to invite you to be a part of the family. I want to invite you to be a part of the family. God loves you. He sent His only begotten Son to die on the cross for you. And in Romans it says, whosoever will. Hey, whosoever means you. If you want to be a part of the family, here's what you got to do. you got to admit that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus Christ loves you, that He came, that He died, and that He rose again. Confess your sins and call on Him to be your Lord and Savior. I used to, I have a friend, and he used to do this illustration, I'm not going to do it, but he would talk about when you have God, you have so, so much, and what he'd do is he'd call people on stage, he said, when I accepted Jesus Christ, I got Jesus, and he would get somebody, and everywhere I go, they go, and they would walk around stage, not only, and he said, not only did I get Jesus, but I got his father, and everywhere I go, they go, and you got two people up here just walking around. He said, but not only when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I got Jesus the Son, I got God the Father, and I have the Holy Spirit that dwells within you. He said, and everywhere I go, and so he's got three people up here just walking around, walking around. Everywhere I go, they go, and then they got the guardian angels, and then he called brothers and sisters in Christ, and by that time, there's a lot of people on stage. 
And they're walking around. He says, when I accepted Jesus, I got all this. That I have so, so much. And you got so much to celebrate, to be happy about that God has given you. He said, but if I don't have Jesus, I don't have. And he'd go tell them to sit down. I don't have. Go sit down. I don't have. I don't have. And he just got to where he's just by himself. I'm here. And maybe you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you just say, it's me. Jesus is calling. Maybe right now the Holy Spirit's knocking at your heart's door and he's saying, come, come. You've heard about God's love. You've heard about how Jesus came and died for you. Let today be the day that you accept him as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Let's stand and pray. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for these grandparents in the room. God, we thank you for your son Jesus loving us, coming and dying on the cross for us. God, I pray that if there's anyone here that doesn't know you, that today would be the day they accept you. God, I pray for each one. I pray that your Holy Spirit move freely. I pray that the decisions that need to be made will be made this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.